Welcome to the Open Forum in the Villages, Florida podcast. In this show, we talk to leaders in the community, leaders of clubs and interesting folks who live here in the villages to get perspectives of what is happening here in the villages, Florida. We are a listener-supported podcast. There will be shout-outs for supporters in episodes. In Season 6, we will continue making substantial improvements to the podcast. This is Mike Roth, and listeners, I'm thrilled to share with you this podcast, which is my passion project for you. This podcast brings me joy, brings you knowledge, inspiration, and a lot of things that people need to know about the villages and the people that are living here and what's actually going on. Creating this podcast is a labor of love. Even though it demands more time than I can easily spare, now, here's where you come in. You can help us keep the podcast alive and thriving. How? By becoming a supporter. There are th- two simple ways that you can support us. The first is a small monthly donation. Visit our podcast website, openforuminthevillagesflorida.com, and click on the black supporter box. Even a small 3 to $10 a month donation makes a difference. And guess what? You can cancel any time, no strings attached. The second way that you can contribute to the podcast is by making a purchase of an Amazon product at Amazon standard prices, and we are paid a small commission on each purchase as an Amazon affiliate. That way there's no extra money out of your pocket, but you are supporting the podcast. Check every week because we're going to be adding new Amazon products that you can buy and support the podcast with. Thank you. And your support means the world to us. Stay curious, stay inspired, and keep those headphones on. Hope you enjoy today's show. This is Mike Roth on Open Forum in the Village of Florida. I'm here today with Ken Van Camp. Ken is a freelance writer, voiceover artist, audio producer, dog lover, and author of the blog and podcast called Kiki's Guide to Training Your Human. And he's written his first book called The Dog Park Massacre. Thanks for joining me, Ken. Thank you for having me, Mike. Ken, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit more about your background and the clubs that you're active in here in the villages? Sure. So I was, most of my professional life, I've been doing software development. I did a lot of writing over the years, but it was mostly technical writing, nonfiction, some about computer stuff, but some other things about my hobbies, like sailing, for instance. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when I moved to the villages, which is in 2020, I set my sights on furthering myself as a writer. Mm -hmm. And I started, I joined some clubs. There's a great critique group called Writers of the Villages Mm -hmm. that uh, taught me so much about writing and really boosted my abilities. The Writers League of the Villages, which is wonderful for promoting your work and for meeting other writers. Not sure I'm answering your question, but long story short, I started working more and more on writing once I came here, and that eventually led me to creating my own blog. Now, the blog is called Kiki's, that must be the name of the dog, Guide to Training Your Human. That's a kind of backwards idea, is (laughs) it? Humans are supposed to train their dogs. Exactly. And why did you come up with the, the backwards title? So after we got Kiki as a puppy, which was 2023, we started discovering her personality, which mm-hmm. was, it was fun. And it was also, she was strong-willed. They say that about beaver terriers. That's the type of, that's the breed she is. That they are a bit obstinate sometimes. They've got a mind of their own. Mm-hmm. And so Kiki's mischievous Sometimes she's even spiteful. And we found that there were funny things she was doing. And I started creating little memes on Facebook, just wondering, what is she thinking? Eventually, I decided to turn it into a blog. And I thought, what better way than to present all of this from her point of view? Hmm. So the blog is written from Kiki's perspective. And it's her ideas, obviously, what I think she's thinking Hmm. about how she's doing things to manipulate us sometimes. No kidding. (laughs) Your dog is manipulating you. Yeah, absolutely. She's training me Mm -hmm. to do things the way she wants me to do them. For instance? For instance, how does she get the best treats? She's got to convince me that I am giving her the good ones and not so much the bad ones. And then there's the whole aspect of training a dog for house training. You're supposed to give them treats 
if you read any of the training manuals. Yeah, when they go outside. You do it then immediately, right? Correct. You don't wait until you come back inside because then you're There's training. There's no connection. Exactly. Kiki has to train me to get it done right away. And she does. She looks me right in the eyes after she pees or poops out. Mm -hmm. She'll just gaze at me. And it's a reminder. You got to, hey, exactly. Don't forget the tree. Oh, that's good. Has Kiki trained you in any other ways? <laughs> yeah, you got to read the book. But yeah. Now, there's other things like there's a whole story about her first road trip and she sits in the back seat mm -hmm. my wife and i sit in the front seats mm -hmm. she didn't like being all alone back there mm -hmm. she wants somebody to sit with her the story is about how she convinces us to sit in the back and of course it deals with a lot of whining and things like that she doesn't talk in this blog or mm -hmm. book she's we don't understand what she's saying obviously we just infer from the normal doggy communication. So one of the two of you sits in the back seat with Kiki. <laughs> That's the way the story goes eventually, yeah. Rough. Not in the beginning. So how did you keep Kiki in the back seat? Was she leashed into something back there? Yeah, so she's got a dog bed, if you mm -hmm. will, and it's it connects to her harness. Oh, okay, yeah. We, we had a dachshund, and he wouldn't stay in that dog bed in the back seat. He had a ride next to my wife. <laughs> no, Kiki doesn't have a choice. Yeah, okay, that's good. If someone wanted to read your blog, Kiki's Guide to Training Your Human, how would they find it? So the blog is posted on both Substack and Medium. So they're both somewhat popular platforms for writing. Substack is the way that most people wind up uh, finding it initially. It, mm. um, it's free. Substack is completely free, always free. Medium, on the other hand, charges $4 a month if you want to join. I always give out the Substack address. Medium is good for me to find followers on. Consequently, it's a social media platform. Right. So you have this idea of a lot of people say, I'll follow you if you follow me, that kind of thing. But it's great for getting the follower numbers up. So I'm up around 800 followers on Medium. I've only got about 100 or so on Substack. Although I think my followers on Substack are more genuine. So they're, they're actually reading it on Substack. I think a, a higher percentage are, yes. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that some people on Substack are posting videos. Um, on the other side, I've always thought that it was an ineffective location for the videos. But that's another, another whole conversation. The other thing in the introduction is this title, The Dog Hog Massacre. <laughs> now... Where did you get that idea? Okay. This is one of the 47 stories in my new book. 47 stories. Wow. Yeah. They're short, of course. Okay. So the reading length is under 500 words, which means about three or four minutes typically. Hmm. Some of them are a little longer, out to six, even seven minutes. But they're short, what I call bite-sized lessons in how to train your human. The Dog Park Massacre is one of those stories in the book. And it came from the blog originally. Is that about a dog park here in the villages? It is, actually, yes. Uh, a so massacre? <laughs> this is Kiki's perspective. Mind yeah, you, right? okay. So what so, really happened? <laughs> so Kiki's very first trip to the dog park here in the villages mm -hmm. was uh, a case where she, of course, went to the small dog so, side. I should mention that Kiki is a very small dog, by the way. She's currently about five pounds, mm -hmm. and she's pretty much fully grown. Okay. She went to the small dog side. Even on the small dog side, she's about the smallest dog there is. And that particular day, there were probably 20 other dogs there. It started out wonderfully, even from Kiki's perspective, that they came up to greet her and say, oh, look, there's a new kid in town. Mm -hmm. And But they crowded around. They wanted to all see her, sniff her, mm -hmm. do everything. And they wound up trampling her, of course. Oh. That... The story progresses a little there, but have an in, a cute little AI-generated photo at one point where Kiki is dressed as an, a member of the Philadelphia Eagles, which is my favorite football team. Mm. And so she pretends to be the running back and all of these opposing team members from the Dallas Cowboys, in this case, are chasing her down the field. And she's headed for the goal line, which, of course, is the exit from the dog park, <laughs> gets tackled before she can ever reach you. Now, what inspired you to write a, a book 
from the dog's perspective. When I was younger, my favorite cartoon was Calvin and Hobbes. You remember Calvin and Hobbes? No. Okay, Bill Watterson wrote this wonderful cartoon about this six-year-old kid named Calvin and his stuffed tiger named Hobbes. Okay. Calvin and Hobbes followed Calvin as he, he was something of a menace to his parents. So what I loved about Calvin and Hobbes was that Bill Watterson never talked down to his readers, even though he was writing a six-year-old story. He also dealt with real-world problems. He was not only trying for the punchline. He talked about things like there were observations of human behavior through the eyes of a six-year-old, mm -hmm. such as commercialism, mm -hmm. pollution. He dealt with the issues of bullying in school. Mm -hmm. And he did it in a way that was sometimes serious and sometimes mocking or satirical. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to do something like that. Now, I'm not a, an artist, so I certainly couldn't create a cartoon, but I'm a writer. And Today, you could create the cartoon. It's very easy <laughs> with, with all of the... AI tools out there. I do actually use some AI-generated photos in my book. Some of them are. Most of them I try to use real photos of Kiki just because she's so photogenic. Okay, well, coming up in October is my course on AIs. I'm supposed to cover 10 different AIs in two sessions of about two hours each at the Richmond Academy. And late September, you'll be able to sign up for that. And let's take a quick break here and listen to a Alzheimer's tip from Dr. Craig Curtis. So Dr. Curtis, what do you think the future looks like, Alzheimer's treatment here in America? I think the future looks very good. I think that these blood tests are going to make a significant difference in our ability to detect someone who's developing Alzheimer's disease before symptoms. A person who develops memory loss due to Alzheimer's disease, we know that disease actually started approximately two decades or 20 years prior. We know that amyloid starts building up for approximately 20 years, 15 to 20 years, which then initiates other brain cells or brain to die off essentially, which leads to Alzheimer's disease. So we're trying to remove that amyloid prior to that so we can prevent Alzheimer's mm -hmm. disease. And we're also attempting to, once somebody already has the cognitive changes or memory symptoms, we're trying to figure out if, we, if re reducing that amyloid really slows the disease. We now have, of course, the world's first medicine on the market that is um, slowing Alzheimer's disease by removing amyloid uh, from the brain. And we're looking at newer, more advanced forms of those medications that remove the amyloid much more quickly in a matter of months. So that's very exciting. With over 20 years of experience studying brain health, Dr. Curtis's goal is to educate the village's community on how to live a longer, healthier life. To learn more, visit his website, craigcurtismd.com or call 352-500-5252 to attend a free seminar. I'm back with Ken Van Camp. Ken, who is the target reader of your book, The Dog Park Massacre? So the book is what I call family-friendly fun. You are not going to find uh, bad language in there, for instance. I, I think that so much of television and movies are filled with profanity that I didn't want to create anything more like that. The worst word you're going to hear out of Kiki's mouth is maybe she calls the hindquarters the butt occasionally. But having said that, the vocabulary level is clearly adult. There are words in there that a kid is not going to understand. It's not intentional. It's just that I'm not talking down to my readers. So you're writing to adults. I am. And my target audience is dog lovers. I think that anybody who loves dogs is going to enjoy these stories about Kiki. How long is the book in pages? I think it's a hundred and pages. The Dog Park Massacre is a book that's available on Amazon right now? Yes, it is. How much is it selling for? So the paperback is fourteen ninety nine, dollars and mm -hmm. the Kindle edition is two ninety nine. dollars Okay. It's also available on Kindle Unlimited. And what's the difference between Kindle and Kindle Unlimited for our listeners? Kindle Unlimited is a subscription service, so you pay a f flat monthly rate, and you can read as many books as you want. That's got to be for someone who's got a lot of time. <laughs> well, past Ellen, Ellen Woods' speed reading course. It's amazing how popular Kindle Unlimited is. Well, a lot of good 
subscription services out there. Sure. Okay. So Ken, Katie's Guide to Training Your Human is going to be a series of books. Do I have that right? And the first book that's currently available is The Dog Park Massacre. Exactly. Got it. And how many books are going to be in the series? I don't know at this point. I only know that I believe that at this point, Kiki has a lot more to say, and she's continuing to tell me these little stories in her way. The blog is continuing. I have many more stories that I've written past the dog park massacre. So let me get this straight. Kiki is telling you the stories. Yes. That reminds me of an old joke. Okay. Driving down the road in Cincinnati, in bomb country, past a sign that says, talking dog for sale. So I can't believe the sign, so I stop. Go in. And, and the farmer is out front, and I say, what's the deal with the talking dog? And he says, go back in the barn, you, you'll find him. So I go back in the barn, and there's this big dog just walking around, and I said, can you understand me? And the dog said, yeah. And, and I said, why would a dog talk? And the dog said to me, I was trained by the CIA to be a spy. I was supposed to go into Soviet Russia, listen in to, and get adopted by military people, and then I was supposed to give my CIA operative all the information that I collected. I, I had my own cell phone and everything. And I said, that's very interesting. So when did you learn how to talk? And he said, oh, I learned how to talk as a puppy. I listened to people and then I duplicated what they said. I said, oh. So I, I left the barn and walked out to the bomber and said, how much is that talking dog you, that you want to sell? And he said, it's only five bucks. I said, why so cheap? He said, the guy lies about everything. <laughs> so I understand you have a joke for me, Ken. Yes, I do. Okay. How is a businessman different from a hot dog? I don't know. The businessman wears a suit. The dog just pants. Oh, <laughs> let's see if my grandson, Evan, gets this far in the podcast. Okay. As he's discovered, not every one of my podcasts has jokes in it, but for the first probably... 70 episodes that I did, I always put a joke in for Evan. I remembered that, so that's why I offered you the joke. That's a good idea. Now, see how I got a call from Evan. Are you working now on the second book in the series? No, not actively. At this point, I'm just continuing to write my stories every week, publish mm -hmm. them on my blog. By the way, the n wonderful thing about publishing stories on a blog is that you get feedback, early feedback. You don't have to wait to compile a book and then look at the reviews, which obviously I so will do. You, you issue a, a new blog post every week? Every week, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, if someone wanted to find it, how would they do that? So they would either go to substack.com, S-U-B-S-T-A-C-K, or to medium.com, which is just like okay. it sounds like. After they go to those, those websites, what do they do? They would search on Kiki's Guide. So Kiki, the important thing there is, is spelled K-E-K-E. -E. A lot of people want to spell it with eyes instead. Probably just putting a Kiki in is enough to get the search to find the book or the, the blog. I, I recommend saying Kiki's Guide mm -hmm. because otherwise you'll wind up with, there's a lot of other people out there actually named Kiki. Okay. I thought it was an unusual, unique name. So how old is Kiki now? She's a little more than a year old, a uh, year and three months now. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell our listeners what the most unusual thing Kiki has done in training her humans? So I think... One of the conflicts that we had in here is with me being the editor, really the flunky of this blog and podcast as well. Kiki is the not only the author, but also the editor and the artistic director and, of course, what she calls the potentate. So is she the pack leader at home? The alpha dog, which leads to some conflicts because I think I'm the alpha dog, mm. but... We have a whole story about when she when she took a vacation with one of our area neighbors and had this conflict over who was the alpha dog. Me, there's no problem. I know it. I'm not the alpha dog in the house. But the neighbor who took her in for a week for us didn't know that. Had to be trained. Yeah. You know? So did she have separation anxiety? I think Kiki does have separation anxiety in the real world. Mm. In her stories, she's totally confident and she rules the roost. I, I had a miniature dachshund that had terrible, say, separation anxiety. He couldn't be away from my wife, and he got very misbehaved, let's put it that way. 
Kiki's very outgoing. I take her to the squares, Sumter Landing, places like that. And she loves to see other people and other dogs and just loves everybody, really. She's a very loving dog. So do you let her walk on the ground or do you put her in a carrier or, or in a stroller? No, no, she walks on the ground. She yes. walks on the ground. Does she have That's little it. booties to protect her feet from the hot pavement? That's Only not- on the really hot days. She's pretty good with it. She doesn't. As long as there's a little bit of shade out there, she's fine. And you take her along some water to, to feed her? Of course, yeah. yeah. Another part to this interesting story about me being the, the flunky mm-hmm. and she being the, the true editor-in-chief was that I one time hijacked her blog and I wrote about something from my perspective and I inserted it into the blog. She took me to task in the following lesson. And what I, you say? She had to say was, first of all, she was very upset. She threatened me with losing my position on the project, replacing me. This became a a sort of a simmering dispute that continued on for the next nine episodes Mm -hmm. of the blog. And she calls them lessons, by the way. And and the the chapters of the book are also labeled lessons. Mm -hmm. Until finally it came to a head. And we had to learn to compromise, or really, to be more specific, she demanded and I compromised. And and the compromise was? It was various things that she wanted, among them, of course, not hijacking her blog and and recognizing that she was the ruler in charge. Mm -hmm. But the other parts are things like she wanted professional haircuts, not these hat jobs that her owners, as we call ourselves, Mm -hmm due to her when we're trying to be cheap and save money on these because these haircuts can be expensive and she's a she's one of these dogs breeds that the hair continues to grow Mm -hmm. continuously Mm -hmm. it it could get very long if you let it go okay and so you conceded to the professional groomer yes (laughs) okay And, and what did kiki say about going to the vet Ah, the vet. There, there's an interesting story in itself. But mm-hmm. one of the things that um, Kiki brought up about vets was that humans tend to exaggerate the fun factor in anything that they want you to believe is going to be a good trip. Mm-hmm. And so the trip to the vet was one of these. In which What she found out, of course, was that Things like rectal thermometers are not so much fun. Yeah, my dog discovered that too. <laughs> and shots is another one. Oh, of yeah, her shots. Not so much favorites, right? So is she afraid to even go into the vet's office? She knows the office now. Yeah, I, I have to pick her up and usher her. Yeah, you in. Yeah. Right. She's not going to go in on her own. Ken, here we are. You had the dog a year and a half, right? Okay, if I could move you in time and take everything you know now back to the first day that you got your dog, Kiki, what would you tell yourself on that first day? You don't know what you're getting yourself into. She's she's really a loving dog, though. Honestly, we don't regret a thing. Good. Thanks for being a guest on the show. Thank you for having me, Mike. Thanks, Ken. Remember, our next episode will be released next Friday at 9 a.m. Should you want to become a major supporter of the show or have questions, please contact us at mike at rothvoice.com. This is a shout out for supporters Tweet Coleman, Ed Williams, Paul Sorgen, and major supporter Dr. Craig Curtis at K2 in the Villages. We will be hearing more from Dr. Curtis with short Alzheimer's tips each week. If you know someone who should be on the show, contact us at mike at rothvoice.com. We thank everyone for listening to the show. The content of the show is copyrighted by Rothvoice 2024. All rights reserved.